Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. In the last video that I did on this channel, I said that I am here to answer all your questions, whether they are simple questions or whether they are hard-hitting, difficult questions that are painful to answer. To not answer these questions would be a dereliction of duty of this organization and frankly, just a shit stain on my own reputation. So let's answer the most popular question that shows up on a regular basis on this channel and on forums and people contacting us. What is up with that license? Why do you have this non-standard license? What is the point of this? Why should we trust you? And what are you trying to do with it? These are all excellent questions. And I'd like to answer them by starting off explaining what it is we're trying to do with this organization. Yes, we are trying to create open source software where you own your identity, not Google or Twitch or somebody else, where the software allows you to see the source code and modify the source code for your personal use so that you understand that there are no DRM, no trackers, no spyware, no ads, no crypto shit coins, no nonsense, where you get access to a server if we are offering you a client application and above all that the software doesn't suck. We are trying to make software that does not abuse you. That is what we're trying to do. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do more than anything else is demonstrate to real programmers that are good at their job that you can actually make money doing open source software development. We want people that are at that top one to 3% of all programmers to not think that in order to make a living, that they have to go over to Google or Amazon or Netflix or Adobe and take away access to all of your personal shit unless you agree to have machine learning algorithms go through it. And then if you don't agree to it, well, your stuff goes bye-bye. Because right now, the good programmers, the top 1%, they're not going to develop Caden Live. They're going to develop Adobe Premiere. They are not going to develop Nextcloud. They're developing Google Docs, Calendar, and Contacts. We don't want programmers thinking that if they want to work on an open source project, they need to get a real job so that they can support themselves working from one of these dumpster fires of a company so that they can afford to live their life, to pay their rent, to pay their mortgage, to be able to drive a car and go to HEB and buy food so that they can work on the open source application that doesn't abuse you on the weekend. We would like to change the culture, and that's gonna be a very difficult thing to do. Does Aaron have a lot of money? Yes, he does. Can he fund everything? No. We can fund the pieces of software that we have here. We could fund them for the next three to five years. We could probably fund them easily to the next decade. But that's the pieces of software that we have here. There's a lot of software that needs to be redone and a lot of hardware that needs to be remade in a manner that doesn't abuse end consumers. And that requires more than just one benevolent billionaire doing some funding for a couple of years or a decade. That requires hundreds of thousands to millions of people, dare I say it, actually quit their jobs working for these software companies that create abusive garbage software that treats you like shit and decide that they are gonna create software that doesn't abuse you. And in order to do that, we need to demonstrate that there is actual money in doing that. And we would like to go first. We realize this is a difficult task because again, we have invested invested millions to tens of millions of dollars in different open source software projects, and we have donated millions of dollars to different open source software projects. And needless to say, we have not exactly made the money back. We realize that this is going to take some time. We realize that we are trying to create an ecosystem. And as a result of trying to create this ecosystem from scratch, we're going to be putting a lot of money out up front. But what we want to try and prove is that there is actual money to be made in open source software. The software license that we have created is a license that is very different from other open source licenses. It requires that if you're using the software for commercial purposes, that you pay us. This is not existent in any of the OSI compliant licenses. And we think that this is a problem. If you take a look at the relationship between FFmpeg and Google, YouTube brought in $31 billion in revenue last year. Google made over $60 billion in net profit after taxes and expenses and everything else last year. FFmpeg? which is the primary building block that every single video on YouTube is getting encoded by, they, uh, what did they get, like 2015, 2016, they got a couple of people to work on their software from the Google Summer of Code? I'm sorry, I helped you make $31 billion. Like, you're going to give me a couple of lines of code? Really? That's a fair exchange of value. We don't think it is. What we're asking for is very simple. If you like our software, you don't have to pay for it as a consumer. But if you like it, We'd like you to pay for that software as a consumer. It's open source. You can see the source code. You can compile it yourself. And even if you don't do that, we're going to make binaries available to you so that you can utilize our software DRM-free, paywall-free, spyware-free, ad-free with sovereign identity on any platform you want. You can have your client. You can have your server. We're not hiding anything from you. We would like you to pay. Secondly, if you are a commercial organization utilizing our software for commercial purposes, we would like the ability to require 
that you pay. In order to get people to stop thinking that if they want to make a living, that they need to go over and work at Amazon or Google because they read the YouTube comments on this channel where people are saying things like, can you imagine the negative emotional reaction when people go from the software being free to it asking for money but still being free? I don't blame these people when they think that they need to go to Amazon or Google or Netflix to make a living. Just read the comments. I would think I have to do the same thing. But in order to get them to actually believe that, we need to come up with a framework and an ecosystem where we can create software that doesn't abuse you. And simultaneously, if a company has a $1 or $3 trillion net worth based on our stuff, yeah, we can get some of that value too. That is a happy middle ground for us between open source software where, again, Google can bring in $31 billion of revenue and contribute a couple of lines of code and closed source software where Adobe has the right to be like the South Park Cable Company CEO and tell you that you don't get to access any of your data even though you're a paying customer until you agree to the new terms of service that have machine learning algorithms going through your stuff. We're trying to change that. Now, let's go over the part that's actually some bullshit in this license, which is the part that most of you are probably interested in. The part of the license that is bullshit is as follows, and I will use those words, bullshit. Eh, it's not my company. I'm representing somebody else's, and I kind of work here, but let's be real. Do you expect me to say anything else? In Section 4, Termination, Suspension, and Variation, we may suspend, terminate, or vary the terms of this license and access to the code at any time, without notice, for any reason, or no reason, in respect of any licensee, group of licensees, or all licensees including, as may be applicable, any sub-licensees. That is bullshit. What have I been saying for 12 years on my personal YouTube channel? Companies try to change the terms of the sale after the sale and twist your arm. Don't accept it. Don't give them money. Don't trust them. I can't ask you to trust this. I wouldn't trust the people that wrote this to feed Mr. Clinton the cat. I wouldn't. Just being honest with you. So why is this here? That is an excellent question. And to be clear, what follows is an explanation not an excuse. Aaron, the person funding all of this, he is not a business person. He is a programmer. He sits in his office 12 hours a day from sunrise to sunset working on a programming language that has less than 100,000 lines of code that anything you write in should be able to boot up on bare metal without an operating system in 400 milliseconds or less without a kernel. That's something that's going to take a while. A few years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. A little bit of Terry Davis meets Howard Hughes going on there. In all seriousness, he's, he's sitting in his office working on this shit all day. He wrote something out on a napkin. It's an explanation, not an excuse, but it's reality. This license that I think is a shit stain on the organization and a shit stain on my reputation for not doing something about it sooner was written on a napkin. It was supposed to be there for like a day or two. It wound up getting to the bottom of the pile and being there for a year. An explanation, not an excuse, but that's why it happened. That has been removed. I have been telling you for years, over a decade now, do not trust people that tell you that they have the ability to change the terms of the sale after the sale. This literally says that we can change the terms of the sale after the sale. This was put into this license because we knew what we had written was a draft and we wanted to write something complete later, which we have done. We want to have a middle ground here and we want to try and experiment as we're making this middle ground. There are not a lot of people trying to do this and frankly, I think it's time that somebody does. There was a conversation that I had with Aaron on that panel we did a few months ago, and it, the title of it was, Has Open Source Failed? Or Why Has Open Source Failed? And I disagreed with him a little bit there. I pushed back a little bit. The internet runs on a lot of pieces of open source software, whether we're talking about Apache running almost every single server, all these different types of databases, email servers. A lot of the internet runs on open source software. At this company, I'm allowed to disagree with my boss. We are a tolerant organization, which is more than I can say of Google. At the same time, I 100% agree with him on the fact that consumer open source has failed. How many feature length films that have made hundreds of millions of dollars at the box office were edited with Caden Live? How many were edited with Adobe Premiere? How many platinum selling albums were created using LAD PSA plugins or LV2 plugins versus albums that were created using Waves, Universal Audio, Isotope, URS? How many people are using Image on their phone versus iCloud or Google Photos for their photos? How many people here are using Nextcloud for their notes and their contacts and their calendar instead of Google Keep and Google Calendar and Gmail for their contacts? Now somebody's going to come along and say, well, look at the Android open source project. That's open source. 
Really? I can't even use a banking app on my Android phone without installing a proprietary layer called Google Play Services. Almost all the consumer software that we use has a closed source and abusive element to it. While open source may run all these servers, closed source is what most consumers are using for their personal stuff. And I wanna see that change. And the way that we get that to change is not by having one billionaire fend a few projects for the next few years or decade. The way we get it to change is by having engineers that work at these companies realize, you know what? Huh, wait, I can actually make a living and feed my family off of creating software that doesn't abuse people? I'm gonna go do that. And we're experimenting to see if we can make that happen. We're going to try different things. Some of the things we try may succeed. Some of the things we try may fail. Some of it may just be a shit idea. But we're going to try it. And the one thing I will promise you, the one thing I will guarantee to all of you, is that everything we do every step of the way, we will be transparent about. We will follow the principles that I have adhered to in this video and in other videos I've done here. And above all, we will put our customers first. We are experimenting to figure out if we can create a sustainable open source software ecosystem where software that does not abuse you, software where you understand what it is your computer is running and can actually have some level of control over it is the type of software that is offered by the default. Where closed source software, well, that's the niche thing because all the money is in open source software now. All the money is in developing software that doesn't abuse people. Is it a bit of a pipe dream? Kind of. Are we gonna go for it anyway? Absolutely. At the very least, at the end of it, we'll be able to say that we tried. If we put millions to tens of millions of dollars into developing good open source software that is better than the closed source alternative, that does not abuse people, does it actually make money? Is it sustainable? Does it simply require the benevolent billionaire to fund everything? Because that's the thing. At the end of the day, while he does have a lot of money, there are people that have spent upwards of $500 million trying to come out with their own competing hardware for a smartphone and not even gotten far enough to create something that the FCC would allow them to import into the country. It is very easy to spend insane amounts of money when what you are doing is reinventing the wheel. And the wheel, frankly, at this point, needs to be reinvented in every category. In video editing software, in smartphone software, in hardware, in bookkeeping software, in everything. You know that book, Three Felonies a Day? I guarantee you that almost everybody watching this video comes across at least three pieces of closed source, abusive software every single day that they're forced to interact with in some way, shape, or form. I want to get to a point where developers realize they can make so much money creating software that doesn't abuse people that the closed source software is the niche software. That's gonna require some experimentation. That's gonna require some time. At the end of the day, we're gonna try some things on the route to doing that. And if we mess up, I guarantee you and I promise you beyond a shadow of a doubt, I will come up here and explain why we did what we did. I will explain when we've made a mistake and I will come up here and say, I'm sorry. I am sorry that this garbage was ever in a license associated with our software. It was unacceptable and you will never see it there again. However, at the same time, while I imagine that that settles the matter for a lot of people, I'm sure that there are gonna be people in the comments and I'm sure there are gonna be people across the internet that are enraged at the idea that we have created a license where we would like people to pay for pieces of software that we create if they are making tens of millions of dollars off of it commercially. And for that, I will give you a clip from the end of Inglorious Bastards. Because some of the people that are saying this are making it sound like that is the end of the world. Nobody's gonna use this, it is evil. You'll be shot for this? Nah, I don't think so. More like chewed out. I've been chewed out before. Eh, I'm not gonna get hung for it. I'll probably get chewed out. I've been chewed out before. That's fine. Especially if it's for this. If we're creating software that has no paywall, that you can use as a free trial, indefinitely review the source code of, that is better than closed source software, and your issue with that software is that you want to be able to make tens of millions of dollars off of it, and you, if you do that, you would have to pay us. Eh, I can live with that. And if you can't live with that, use the stock YouTube app. Use Google Photos. Use iCloud. I don't know what to tell you. Enjoy not having a delete button. Enjoy having Google employees go through your photos and report you to the police because you had to send photos to a doctor. We're trying to make software that's better than that. But if us not hitting a particular idealistic vision of how you want it to be distributed bothers you, because you don't have perfection, you're gonna throw the rest of it away. Eh, I can live with that. Eh, I've been chewed out before. I don't mind being chewed out. We have now written a proper license that does not have this bullshit in it. And it is a license that I can stand behind. We are creating software here 
that allows you to view the source code for personal use, modify the source code for personal use. We make the server available if we make a client available to you. No forced cloud bullshit. If we have software that requires that you log in or has login features at any point, we like to create that with something called sovereign identity. So you're not logging on to google.com. You're not Lewis Rossman at google.com. You're not Lewis Rossman at Twitch or Lewis Rossman at Amazon. You're just plain Lewis Rossman. We want to create software with no ads, no trackers, no spyware, no user is the product garbage model, no crypto shit coins, no nonsense. And for personal use, our software will work with no paywalled features, even if you don't pay for it. It's an infinite trial. My conscience is clean on what it is we are offering here. We are offering software that is put together, that is programmed, that is engineered at a genuine professional level with millions of dollars in funding. And if you want, you can use it for free. We're asking that you pay for it. If you like it, we're asking politely. And if you're a commercial organization that's using it to make money, we're requiring you to pay. I can live with that. That is a fair compromise, in my opinion, between FFmpeg allows YouTube to make $31 billion and gets a couple of lines of code, and Adobe Premiere pulls a rug pull of forcing you to agree to have machine learning algorithms go through all of your shit to improve their software and products and services, or you can't get your data back while you're paying them. Also, if you take a look at it, you'll notice that of the tens of millions of dollars that we've given out to open source software projects, as well as open source projects that we've invested in internally, we have never required somebody to use this license. This is an engineer-driven company, which means that the engineer of that particular product gets to choose what the license is for the software. And when it comes to the donations that we've given that are no strings attached, we have not even mentioned licensing to these people, nor would we ever. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. And as long as you ask them in good faith and are not a dick, I will answer them to the best of my capability, whether they are simple questions or difficult, hard-hitting ones. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.